Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do general solution. Now general solution in grade 12 is usually a good place to score marks. But you need to know three general rules. When you look at the general solution, they usually come complex and they look very, very challenging. But if you follow these three general rules, you will be fine. Number one, if you see a sin 2a in the question, then any other cos 2a, you must use the expansion of cos squared minus sin squared. Also, any constant must be changed to sin squared plus cos squared. Now this sounds silly, but as we're doing sums, you would actually understand what I'm saying. If you see a sin a in the question, then any cos 2a must be changed to 1 minus 2 sin squared a. If you see a cos a in the question, then you would change your cos 2a into 2 cos squared a minus 1. Now sin 2a means a sin and a cos next to each other. Okay, let's do an example and then you would understand. So the basic three golden rules is if you see these three choices in your question, you're going to follow the expansion as I had advised. When you're doing general solution, you're going to expand where you have to, and then you're going to do algebra, and after that you're going to do your standard general solution that you had seen or had done in grade 11. The algebra in this section tends to be trinomials, taking out a common. A lot of these are basic questions that you know, but because it's written so messy, we tend to get confused. Let's take the following example. Let us look at this specific question. Now, it is a general solution. How do I know that this is different from an identity? Is because it has an equal to sign. Right. Now, since I have a sin 2a, we always know that sin 2a has one expansion. It's clearly going to become minus 2 sin a cos a. You never have a choice with sin 2a. But you have a choice with 2 cos 2a. So you have a choice with the cos 2a. Now what I had said is if you have a sin 2a, then change your cos 2a to cos squared minus sin squared. Why would I say that? Because you can see, since it has a sin 2a, you have both cos and sin in your question, which means you have to continue with that trend. So we have 2 into cos squared a minus sin squared a. Then you're also going to change your constant. Remember, sin squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. So we have minus and then we have sin squared plus cos squared. Why am I keeping the 1 there? You see, sometimes the constant is a 2 or a 3. Then you'd say minus 3 into sin squared plus cos squared. Because no matter what, sin squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. So we have minus 1 into sin squared plus cos squared. Now we're going to get rid of all our brackets. So we have 2 cos squared a minus 2 sin squared a, minus 2 sin a cos a, minus sin squared a, minus cos squared a. Simplifying or putting it in order, we have cos squared a, minus 2 sin a cos a, minus 3 sin squared a. Now, when you look at this, what you should notice is that I have a cos squared, then I have the cos to the power 1, and then I have no cos. So when you have descending powers of a square function, 
or you have descending powers of a square. What do we actually have? You actually have a trinomial. Look, x squared minus 2x minus 3. If I were to factorize this, I would have had x minus 3 and x plus 1. Now the x represented cos, but I have a sin. So I put y and y squared, which means that I'd have x minus 3y, x plus y. If we go back to our ratios, what do we have? We have cos a minus 3 sin a. And we have cos a plus sin a. If you are doubtful, you can double check it by doing the kitty cat. Cos times cos is cos squared. Minus 3 sin a times positive sin a minus 3 sin squared a. Then our smiles minus 3 sin a cos a plus 1 sin a cos a gives me minus 2 sin a cos a. Now how do we solve? We are going to have cos a is equal to 3 sin a. And we have cos a is equal to negative sin a. Now from our previous knowledge or from our summary of grade 11 work, we know that if the angles are equal, then I am doing a tan. So I know tan is sin a over cos a. So if I divide by cos a, divide by cos a, I would have 1 is equal to 3 tan a, giving me tan a is equal to 1 over 3. Now from here we do our general solution, shift tan 1 over 3. So we have a is equal to 18,43. But that is not complete. Then you have to do your t. After you do your t, you have to decide, okay, for your t, we need to decide which quadrant. Because it's positive, I mean my first and my third quadrant. Let us continue with this after we've done the second uh, formula. We again know we have the same angle. So we allow to use the tan rule. Sin over cos gives me tan. So I have minus tan A is equal to 1. So I have tan A is equal to negative 1. Using our calculators, we know we don't put the sign into our calculator. So we simply press shift tan 1, which will give me 45 degrees. Now let us continue with our general solution. Look at the first part. Let's just review. Number one, you had to expand, which is basically like identities. You must be careful how you expand. Once you expand, you're going to do algebra. After you do algebra, you're going to come down to identities. But you are not complete there. You have to continue with your identity. So we have tan A is equal to a third And we have tan A is equal to negative 1. Now pressing shift tan 1 over 3, we have A is equal to 18,43. And on this side we have A is equal to 45 degrees. Now we know that tan is positive in the first and in the third quadrant. So the first quadrant we're going to have A is equal to 18,43 plus K180. 180 because the period of a tan graph is 180 degrees. Then for the third quadrant we're going to have A is equal to 180 plus 18,43 plus K180. So A is equal to 198,43 plus K180. Now let's do the same for the second answer. So we know again 
we need to check it's negative negative is in the second and the fourth quadrant now the second quadrant we have a is equal to 180 minus 45 plus k 180 which gives us a is equal to 135 degrees plus k 180. In the fourth quadrant we have that a is equal to 360 minus 45 degrees plus k 180. So a is equal to 315 degrees plus k 180. Every time you do a general solution, it doesn't always end up being a uh, 10, it can be a cos, it can be a sin, but you have to continue till the t, even though it seems long and it seems tedious, you have to continue till the t. Let's do another example. What we need to notice is that we have a cos a, which will immediately decide how do we change this cos to a. If I have a cos, then I'm going to expand it as 2 cos squared a minus 1. So I got 2 into 2 cos squared a minus 1 minus 2 cos a. Get rid of our brackets, we have 4 cos squared a minus 2 minus 2 cos a. Now put it in correct order, descending powers of cos. Look at what we have. We have a trinomial again. 4x squared minus 2x minus 2. If we factorize, we take out a common 2, we're left with 2 into 2x squared minus x minus 1. We continue to factorize. So we have 2x plus 1, x minus 1. That means that for this trinomial, we have... Two into two cos a plus one. Close brackets, open brackets, cos a minus one. It is much like what you would have done in grade eleven, called the k method. So you're taking out cos and you're putting in k, and then you solve using k because you can see it better. Now, if I want to get rid of the two, because it's a constant, I can get rid of it, and it will make it equal to zero. So I have two cos a plus 1 is equal to 0 and I have cos a minus 1 is equal to 0. Cos a is going to equal to minus 1 over 2. Cos a is going to equal to 1. Now you are not done. All you've done was solve for cos a. You still have to do general solution. So we're going to press in our calculators shift cos 1 over 2. So we're going to have a is equal to 60 degrees. We know it's a negative, cos is negative in the second and third quadrant. So I'm going to have A is equal to, the second quadrant is 180 minus 60 plus K 360. Why 360? Because the period of a cos graph is 360. That gives me A is equal to 120 degrees plus K 360. Then in the third quadrant we have A is equal to 180 plus 60 degrees plus k 360. a is equal to 240 degrees plus k 360. Then we're going to do the same for cos a. Now we know cos a, a would equal to 0 degrees. Even though it seems like you shouldn't continue, you have to continue because 0 degrees actually also lies on 360. If you have cos of 360, it's also equal to 1. So where is cos positive? It's positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. The first quadrant, we're going to have a is equal to 0 plus k360. And in the fourth quadrant, we're going to have a is equal to 
360 minus 0 plus k360 giving us that a is equal to 360 plus k360. When you're doing the general solution for grade 12, the cos 2a's and the sin 2a's is what shows the pupils off. But if you expand correctly, you would come to a trinomial or simply taking out a common, any of the factorizing rules that you are familiar with. Once you do that, the general solution that it ends up with is much more easier than the challenging ones in grade 11 because it becomes very easy in, in the sense that it's cos a is equal to minus half. It's a simple angle. And the tan one is a very common one. Thank you for watching.